Now, today is World Menopause Day, a subject, of course, we've discussed loads on the show. I've spoken about how it affected me and Carol Vorderman, Ulrika Johnson, they've also talked about it and said that it's made them feel, well, quite depressed sometimes. I'm joined this morning by Susanna Constantine, who we've seen recently on Strictly, of course, and she said the menopause, what made you feel sort of worthless and a bit unattractive? Yeah, yeah. I think it was it's interesting because the menopause is something that affected my life from an early age because my mum, um, who was manic depressive, went through the menopause and really nosedived. Right. So I was always terrified of the of menopause approaching. And then suddenly, five years later, I realised I haven't had a period for five years, but I never felt the physical side right. effects, which I know can be horrendous. Mm. But I went through, and I'm still going through, the mental menopause. Yeah. And I think there are two, from a layman's perspective, two very different things. Mm. And as women um, of kind of our age, you, you, you start to lose so much. You so do. you stop getting your period, your children leave home, you may be thinking about retiring. Um, your whole world is changing. And it's a really tough time for it is, women. But you kind of turned it on its head in a way. Because you did things that you just thought to yourself, right, OK, I'm feeling rubbish, I have to get out of this somehow. Mm. And you did amazing challenges. Mm. I mean, you went to the South Pole, for goodness sake. Yeah. You know, you, you did Strictly. Yeah. I mean, it was... And also, with age and wisdom and experience, it didn't matter so much if I failed, as yeah. long as I tried. So I had, I had that on my side. And... And I really encourage women to go out and try something new mm. and, and just give it a go. And, and if it doesn't work, it doesn't matter, but at, at least you've tried. And that's what we say to our children all the time. That's very true. And now I'm saying it but, to myself. But now it's actually, it doesn't, you're right, it doesn't matter yeah. as much. Mm. When you're younger, any sort of sense of failure or trying something that might not work mm. is so difficult. Mm. But actually now it's okay. As well as that though, you have also done something that you've been wanting to do for ages, which is you've written your first novel after yes. the snow. And it's, you, you touched on your mum, but there's a sort of kernel of your mother in here, isn't there? Yes, I mean, that, that's it's the paperback version, um, which is coming out soon, and then it came out last year. But it basic, essentially, it's a love letter to my mother. Yeah. And the mother that I, I knew was inside this woman who was ravaged by mental illness. And um, she, you know, she was the best mother she could be. Yeah. Uh, and I wanted to show that through the eyes of an 11 year old girl why well, that's just sort of how it happened but it's interesting to me and having watched my children grow up how when at times of trauma or difficulty how they they have this ability to whitewash everything to be able to deal mm. with it yeah and so that is the central point mm. of the story and also the aristocracy at that time in 1969 when the book is set about you know, that was a time when they were still incredibly... They were irresponsible and basically they were living off the past yeah. and all the wealth that had been created by their forebears. And they didn't really have the responsibility. They'd lost sight of, of never having a responsibility. Mm. But then that started to change. So it was a really Massive. interesting, pivotal yeah. time. And they live in this enclosed world and it's an insight into how they lived. And you're well. working on a sequel right now as well. I'm working oh, on a sequel, good, yes. Which yeah. is great. It's, I kind of feel as if this is what you really, really want to do. It's kind of like your passion. It's, it's weird. Or right? one of them. <laughs> I've never, you know, I, I didn't go to university. I was too thick to get in. And I uh, didn't get good enough grades. But it's something that I've always loved. And, and, and weirdly, my, my writing came from writing thank you letters. And it was the sports editor of The Telegraph, who sadly was not with us anymore. And I wrote him a thank you letter. And he said, my God, you can write. Come and write for us. Wow. And then I started writing about God, cricket. That's amazing. <laughs> so I yeah, about cricket. <laughs> which I love too. <laughs> And, yeah, and it went from there. And I've always read oh, a voracious brilliant. reader. So anybody can give it a go. I think it's a brilliant thing to do. Yeah. Absolutely fantastic. You also touched upon the whole kind of emptiness thing. Yes. And that is hard. I've gone through that myself. Yes. And it is really, really hard. We, mm. we, you know, we, we, we sort of bring them up to fly. Yeah. And then when they do fly, of course, we're delighted. Yeah. But at the same time, something inside you dies a yes, little bit. Yes, it does. It really yeah. does. Yeah, it's, it's difficult. Like you say, you encourage them to be independent. And that's what I want for them more than anything else. But it's it still is a, a bit hard. It's it a big really moment, is. yeah. And strictly, it's such a shame you were out early. Thank you for doing it. I really Thank do. You. Well, you've got to do it, Lorraine. I, no, I, and honestly, no. Not in a million years. <laughs> okay. I love it. I love yeah. watching it. I really do. Mm. I think it's a great, great show. But I don't think I can yeah. do it for sure.